Hello. <laughs> okay, so today I wear my hair in these curls um, and that is what I'm gonna teach you to do today because I have lots of questions on how you get that lift in the front, how you get those curls, what kind of tools I use to do that. So I thought I'd do that for you today. Um, the first thing, so what I've done so far with my hair is I have just blow dried it. So nothing except for blow dry. I have put all my products in it, the same products that I use in the uh, blow dry tutorial that I also have on here. So all those same products. So now prior to starting, I am gonna add another product which is the dry, this is the Kenra dry shampoo. So if you are not using a dry shampoo, on the very first day that you do your hair, that you wash your hair, you are not getting the maximum benefit out of it. I, you're missing the boat. Or, well I guess you're halfway on the boat, but it's dragging you. <laughs> because you are using the dry shampoo, which is a good start, but you do need to use it on the very first day that you wash your hair, and then you really probably won't have to use it again after that, so that is a key point. So I just sprayed, kind of parted and sprayed everywhere that you might get oily. I like this one because it does provide a little bit of grip and a little bit of texture to the hair. So if you want volume, this is a great one for volume. So first things first, we're gonna start off in sections. And actually, I'm going to part off this bottom half of my hair and we're gonna curl that first. And I am gonna be putting my halo in there today if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that a lot of the times I wear, <coughs> it's called a halo, but it's a hair extension piece that's like removable. <clears throat> so kind of like clip-ins, but no damage. So I'm just taking my flat iron right here and I'm just flat ironing the ends of my hair. All of these products and tools that I use today, I will link them in the description below, okay? So I'm just flat ironing the ends of my hair just to get those straighter because they are a little bit frizzy from blow drying. So next thing, the tool that I'm going to be using today to do this look is E. This is um, a three quarters inch curling iron. So three quarters inch. This is relatively small. I like to use a clamp and curl curling iron. I talk about this a lot in all my videos because you could absolutely use a wand, but I feel like a clamp and curl, you heat from both sides. If you want, you can just wrap the hair around it. If you, um, or if you want it to go by faster, you can open it up, wrap the hair inside, and then clamp down. So you understand what I'm saying about it heats from both sides, right? Because you get this part and this part heating where if you just wrap it around the hair, sometimes I feel like you have to let it sit on the hair for a really long time, as well as the hair probably that's touching the iron. So if you were to just wrap around, all the hair that's touching the iron first is getting more heat than the rest of the hair. So it could potentially cause damage. So I just like to use a clamp and curl just because it's faster and I can heat from both sides. So basically all I'm doing is wrapping the hair around the iron, not really worrying much about the ends. So starting at the top and wrapping the hair around the iron, leaving the ends out, um, just a little bit, maybe like an inch to, and you can kind of vary, it doesn't have to be the same. Now, because it's hard for me to wrap the hair back here, I am just gonna do like kind of a regular curl. So now I'm coming to the back where I left off, and I'm always curling in the oh, same direction, and that is away from the face. So you understand what I'm saying here about this part. I clamp, roll, 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 and then leave the ends out. And the reason I'm doing that right there is like I said, it's just really hard to get your curling iron if you have short hair wrapped around. Now if you have longer hair, you can probably still do that. But with short hair, it's hard. So I just make it easy on myself and clamp and curl. Now I'm back to getting closer to the front. So when I say all curls go away from the face, that means you are wrapping those curls around the curling iron away from the face. And this is important when doing this type of a look. So starting at the top, wrapping the curls around the face. I'm trying to keep my iron as much as I can pointed downwards. So as much as you can 
get that iron to point down. I know it's hard and that's where if you, if it's easier for you, just hold the iron down and wrap the hair around. Don't worry about opening the clamp just cause that can sometimes make it a little bit harder. So, okay, we got that done. So now next thing I'm gonna do is add my halo. So I'm going to kind of just leave my hair parted in the middle for now. And I know because I wear this halo often, I know right where it goes in my head. So I've just like taken a parting all the way down in the back, clip the rest of this up. And I'm gonna show you how this halo works. So here it is, this is the halo. This is the halo and it holds with a string. It has these notches in it right here so you can adjust it based off of um, you know, the shape of your head, where you wanna place it, all that stuff. So I just place that to where the string is right in my part line and then kind of work my fingers through it. The nice thing about these halos is it saves you a lot of time because they're already curled most of the time. So you just don't really have to curl them and you don't have to wash them all that frequently. I wash mine maybe once a month, every two months, depending on how often I wear it. But for the most part, so see that, I have that all placed in and this is just gonna give me that extra thickness and extra fullness. So because these curls are a little bit bigger than what I want to do today, I'm just gonna touch up a few of those halo curls by doing the exact same thing, kind of taking some small sections and wrapping it around. Not, and you don't have to be like this because some of them are bigger curls and some of them are smaller curls. I actually like that. So it just kind of creates a little bit of texture in there and it's not going to, you know, it just creates all this texture throughout here. And then once I worry about the top sections, those will be more uniform. But I promise having different vari various lengths of curls is actually, or not various lengths, not lengths, sizes, various sizes of curls is great for providing more texture throughout the hair. So I'm just kind of grabbing a few random pieces of my halo and I'm curling them. Again, focusing my curling iron down pointing down, wrapping those around, leaving the ends out. Okay. Now, I am going to, once I get these done, basically do the same technique throughout the hair, um, everywhere else, okay? So, next layer, take that down, and separate it up. Now I'm gonna show you this next layer because it is important. I'm not curling the front yet either. These very front pieces of my hair, right here, I like to curl those very last because I don't like them as curly as the rest of my hair. Okay, so, 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 so. I feel like I may say that a lot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. <coughs> Take the hair, you're gonna hold it straight up and you're gonna back comb. I'm gonna back comb real close into my roots right here, like three or four times so that it's just in my root area. And this is a Cricut comb. Cricut is the brand. Again, all of this stuff I will link below. And it has fine, I use a fine tooth comb side, okay? Once I hold the hair up and back comb that section, I spray with my Aveda Air Control Hairspray. This will hold your back combing in like you wouldn't believe. This is like one of the main products that I cannot do my hair without. So it really does hold that back combing in. It's a super lightweight hairspray and it holds that back combing in better than anything else I've ever used. So I just am following that all the way around my head. Again, just back combing two or three times right at the root and then spray and then let that dry. So as it's drying, I just work my way over to this side here. 
pick up my section. This will take you a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top, wrap it around, get that curling iron as close to your scalp as you can. That is important. That is very, very important. So the curling iron goes as close to the scalp as you can get it without burdening yourself. So to the top, wrap it around, going backwards, let it heat. As long, how, however long you need to, you know, leave this curling iron on here is dependent on your hair type, your density, your texture, um, the damage, like there's so many things that go into it. So I will give you a good rule of thumb when you're curling to know if you've left it on long enough. Obviously, if you're seeing like a ton of steam and smoke, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> so don't leave it on long enough that you're seeing steam and smoke. <laughs> but if you um, pull the curl out, so this is, I'll show you right here because I want this one a little bit curlier. If you wrap it around and if you haven't left it on long enough, it won't be very curly or your curl may look a little skewampus, a little bit crazy. Um, that means you didn't leave it on long enough. So if you've left it on long enough, the curl should be pretty uniform and the same all the way around. So I like to come to the back where I left off and start with that one. So I basically curl everything backwards. So this is where sometimes in the back it confuses people because they don't know which direction to curl. But you're, like I said, you're always curling around the face. So basically those last two, those last two curls right here, they curl into each other. Just those back two. Okay. Okay, now, next section, we are just gonna part this off. These are probably, and as far as your partings goes, parting goes, you will take sections according to your thickness and density. So, like I said, this may take you a little bit longer than how you would normally curl your hair, but the cool thing about this curling technique is because they are small curls, they last quite a few days without having to even touch them up. They will just last. They obviously loosen over a couple days time, but they still don't, they don't, they actually loosen to a really pretty curl. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm back combing all the way around, holding the hair straight up while I back comb and placing my comb right at the root and back combing. So that is a key thing that as you get towards the top of the head, Make sure prior to back combing that you're holding that hair straight up and back combing at that root. So not down here and going this way. To get maximum volume, you have to hold that hair straight up, okay? Then we're just gonna go through and curl same way we did before. So I've parted off, I've just done these back two sections. So once you get to this, like your parietal ridge, kind of where your hair recedes right here, you will, I'm not gonna separate that yet. I'm gonna now work just in the back section. So I took another section in the back and I, I'm gonna do the same thing. Wrapping the hair. <laughs> Wrapping the hair and letting it um, curl. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my dog, of course. Just got a bottle of conditioner and I had to make my niece chase him down to go get it. <laughs> it's funny when someone else is having to chase him down <laughs> and not me. 
Yes. Sorry, Drew. <laughs> okay. Now, then we've got the next section, which you watch. I already backcombed here at the roots and sprayed. I just let it dry. Split that in two. These ones now up here, it is so important that you're curling right at the root. You're holding that hair straight up and you are curling right at the root because if you don't, you won't get that same curl and that lift. So by that, I mean don't hold down here and do this because you'll naturally want to do that. It does take a little bit of time to get that curling iron right at the root and then just wrap them around. And, and as they're cooling, because right when you pull them out, they're obviously still hot. So as they're cooling, if you want more of a curl, then you just kind of pull it up like this. As it cools, if you want to straighten it out a little bit, then you can actually pull it and let it straighten like that. But we're gonna go a little bit. I like to get them as curly as possible, and then I go through and either flat iron a few or um, just let them soften over a couple of days too. So, okay, so we've got that section. I That is taking me to about the middle of my head. And now I'm gonna start working through the front. Now I'm gonna work from front to back. So I'm gonna take and part my hair down the middle. And this is where the key comes in for getting the volume, okay? So I am going to split, just take this section right here, and I'm actually going to flat iron this first, really briefly and really quickly. So I'm gonna take these little tiny hairs, and I'm just going to take my flat iron and get it right as close to the root as I can and so fast. You see how fast that was? And as it's cooling, I just was holding it down. And that's mostly because I have these little tiny bangs here um, that are on their way of being growing out, but I don't want them to stick straight up. So if I just flat iron them and then let them stick right back up, that's what they're, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna stick straight up. So in this one, I'm gonna do the same thing, right to the root, hold it, and just pull it all down into the middle, okay? Next section. Root all down into the middle. So you're just getting it really hot right here and allowing it to cool forward. Till we get, this will probably be my last section. Now again, your hair type, your density, your thickness, your texture, that will all depend on how much hair you have right here. I don't have that much because I don't have that much hair. So there's not that much hair here, but this is key to getting the volume, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna split it down the middle. Once it's all pretty cooled off, split it down the middle. Hey! <laughs> We've got another one. Oh gosh. Okay, so then we're going to, I'm gonna just do this side. So I'm gonna lift this up Take this little section right here and I'm gonna backcomb it. Again, pulling the hair up. Very little backcombing at that root. It's just like the tiniest amount, not even an inch. It's like a centimeter, right at the root, spray. Okay, right at the root, small sections, spray. And do the same on this side. So you can see I kind of took a diagonal parting there. Burger, no! Get out! Burger! Hey, get out! Get out! Go away! Okay, and then I'm gonna lift this up, diagonal parting, back home, spray. Next, we're gonna curl, and we're gonna take pretty small pieces, so you want them to be I don't know. Dep this again depends on the thickness of your hair. Starting at your root, curling backwards, and getting that curl pattern. Here, and again, make sure you hold it right to the root 
and the hair straight up. And just keep doing this, both sides. Okay, you can see when I get to this top section here, how the angle of my curling iron, this is where it might be beneficial to not open the clamp just because it's hard. So you want to get that curling iron up. So your arm is basically, you're like a contortionist over here. Pointing the curling iron down, just make sure you get it down, pointed more towards the ground and the root, right up to the root. I'm gonna just hold it until you get that curl. Okay, now I am going to curl these, but just ever so slightly. I'm not gonna curl these a ton. I'm just gonna use my flat iron to just put like a little bend in it. It's not gonna matter that much because these will be kind of lifted up off the face anyways, but I just don't like these to be like super ringlety around the face. So I'm just gonna use my flat iron and just create maybe a little bend in them. Just like that. Okay. Now, go ahead and take your fingers kind of run your fingers through everything and then if you have any pieces like at the ends that you want to be a little bit straighter you can go with your flat iron and just kind of piece any of those out just right on the ends and I, you can see when I pull it straight I'm almost pulling them slightly out a little bit so that it kind of just makes them stick out. Okay, now, this is, it's key to curl down the middle. Now we're gonna part it on the side. So to get that extra lift and volume on the side part, now I'm just gonna take and use my finger, or you could use a comb. I like to use my finger just because I don't, you know, I don't, it's softer and I'm not like combing through everything. And then you just, Part those little hairs over. Just like so. And then you can kind of manipulate with your fingers. Lifting. If you'd like to tuck some, you can tuck some, but see how that lift? That you get and then it also kind of changes too because of the curl pattern of these so they're more curled forward once you flip them which I you know which is what looks good too I think it just creates that texture in there okay couple final products and then you're basically done so pure abundance potion the Holy Grail. This is by Aveda, Pure Abundance Hair Potion. I absolutely love this stuff. This expands the hair by 30%, giving it grip and texture. So it does make the hair, like it just it creates grip to it. It also does help absorb oil, but this stuff, I only use it on the very first day that I wash my hair. So most, pretty much every day after that, I don't have to use it again. But you just take, it's a powder, and you just sprinkle it all over, on the top of the head where you want the most lift, right through here. And as you sprinkle it, the heat from your scalp will melt it to a liquid. It's kind of just like you're, you know, seasoning your hair. Just putting a little salt and pepper in there. <laughs> you're just seasoning it up. <laughs> then you just kind of play with it to get it where you like it. And then you can finish it off with some hairspray. So 
I usually use two different hairsprays because they do two different things. So the first one that I'm gonna use is the Aveda Control Force. And this is key, 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 key to uh, keeping this hair up and off your face. It is a stronghold aerosol and it is good. It's strong. So this is like the sister to air control. This is light hold. This is strong hold, okay? So this I'm going to take and just spray it right here in the front. And as it's kind of drying, I'm just like moving those hairs to where I want them. And they will literally stay pretty much up out of your face all day right there. You don't need much of it. It does a little bit, goes a very long way. So you don't need a ton, okay? And then to finish off everywhere else, oh, and then just take, this is kind of important. Take your fingers and just run your fingers throughout everywhere to make sure you don't have any like holes. If you want, you could take a mirror, check it out in the back. Make sure you don't have any holes because sometimes when you back comb like that, if you don't run your fingers through it to just kind of piece and separate, um, you can have some holes. So then I'm gonna finish out with the Fermata, Aveda Fermata. This is a stronghold as well, but it's a wet hairspray. I like to finish everywhere with a wet hairspray. Whoops, my camera shut off before I could give you a finished look. <laughs> okay, so here's the finished look. I'm sorry that I missed the boat on that. But as always, thank you for watching and I appreciate you all.